Welcome back to our channel, folks. You know, if the Fed's interest rate hikes were a movie, we'd be watching The NeverEnding Story Part 4, starring Jerome Powell as the reluctant hero who keeps trying to save the economy, but somehow keeps finding himself in more trouble. All right, enough jokes. Today, we're going to unpack what's happening behind the Fed's recent communications, inflation, employment data, and of course, those all-important interest rates. Will Powell ever be able to bring inflation down to 2%? Why does the Fed keep deciding to change its outlook? And what does it all mean for everyday family financial planning and the professionals dealing with it in the market trenches? Let's break down the economic puzzle we have at hand. Jerome Powell says the economy is still on solid footing, but the Fed's about to lower rates over time. Confused yet? You're not alone. It's like when your waiter says your meal's on its way, but then you keep waiting and waiting. At some point, you've got to wonder what's really going on in the kitchen. Powell's speeches have become a symphony of uncertainty. This time, the Fed's stance isn't exactly neutral, contrary to what he implies. Despite cooling labor markets and some progress on the inflation front, Powell is leaving room for rate cuts but remains cautious to avoid excessive optimism that could spark another fire under inflation. Let's break down the economic puzzle we have at hand. Jerome Powell says the economy is still on solid footing but the Fed's about to lower rates over time. Confused yet? You're not alone. It's like when your waiter says your meal's on its way, but then you keep waiting and waiting. At some point, you've got to wonder what's really going on in the kitchen. Powell's speeches have become a symphony of uncertainty. This time, the Fed's stance isn't exactly neutral, contrary to what he implies. Despite cooling labor markets and some progress on the inflation front, Powell is leaving room for rate cuts but remains cautious to avoid excessive optimism that could spark another fire under inflation. Let's talk inflation, the central character in this ongoing economic drama. The Fed has been targeting a 2% inflation rate, and while Powell claims inflation is heading back towards that goal, we aren't quite there yet, especially in some critical sectors like housing. Inflation in August settled at a mildly hopeful 2.2%, as measured by the PCE, personal consumption expenditures, price index. But let's not celebrate just yet. Inflation hasn't hit home equally across the board. Housing-related costs stubbornly refuse to decline as quickly, with rent and home prices contributing to ongoing inflationary pressures. Rent and housing inflation continues to post monthly increases of over 5%, a tough pill to swallow for anyone trying to buy a house or sign a lease. So, is a 2% inflation target feasible in the short term? Sure, disinflationary pressures have broadened, but whether we're really headed for sustained 2% inflation is still up for debate. Powell isn't fully celebratory yet, and who could blame him? We've been seeing these flickers of hope for months now, only to have them fizzle out before real progress is made. So again, the Fed dangles rate cuts like a carrot, but it's a cautious move far from guaranteeing relief for families facing higher prices at the grocery store or professionals figuring out how to hedge rising costs at work. Enter one of the biggest questions on the minds of investors. When will the Fed really start cutting rates and by how much? If the Federal Reserve cuts rates too quickly, they risk reigniting inflation. But if they wait too long, they could stifle an already cooling economy. Powell notes projected quarter-point rate cuts in November and December, but also leaves plenty of ambiguity, saying that future moves will depend on incoming economic data. However, markets are betting on a more aggressive taper. Futures markets expect an additional 50 to 75 basis points in cuts before year's end, implying much larger rate cuts than the Fed is suggesting. What does it mean to slow down too much or cut too quick? Well, for professionals in finance, it presents a dilemma. Any wrong move in timing on rate cuts could cause ripple effects, shooting up asset prices, rattling bond markets, or even reigniting inflationary pressures. The stakes aren't just theoretical. The uncertainty is already being priced into volatile market movements. For everyday households, this ambiguity translates to confusion. Stay put or move forward with refinancing that mortgage. Should companies lock in their new loans at the existing rates or expect the lending costs to relax soon? Perhaps Powell needs to take a clearer view and faster decision if families and the market alike are to strategize efficiently. Moving to another significant pain point, what's happening with housing costs? Powell recognized what we already know. The drop in housing-related inflation has been sluggish. That's a pretty gentle way of saying that housing costs are still a serious problem for millions of people. 
For a lot of families, buying a house is still out of reach. Some cities have seen home prices rise by 5 to 10% or more on a year-over-year -year basis. And here's where the double-edged sword comes in. Interest rate cuts may make borrowing cheaper, but they might also inflate house prices by making mortgages more attractive, reigniting demand, and putting upward pressure on these prices. How does the federal square this circle, where it wants to bring interest rates down without propping up an overly expensive housing market? Simple answer, it probably can't. And that's not encouraging news for young professionals trying to get into the housing market, who find themselves caught between high prices and rising costs of living. Now, let's get a bit serious here. It's time for some historical perspective. Everyone remembers the 1970s stagflation, right? That's where inflation and stagnant growth lived side by side, and no one could figure out which policy lever to pull. There's been a lingering fear in recent years that we might repeat history, especially if the Fed mismanages the pace of rate cuts. When Powell notes that some policymakers are wary of cutting rates too quickly, we see that caution in action. No one wants to relive a decade-long battle with inflation rising above 10%. Note that while we are in a very different context today, Global supply chains remain fragile, and the post-pandemic economic recovery is far from textbook material. Today's geopolitical tensions, such as the impact of sanctions on Russia's economy and concurrent pressures on global energy prices, provide another angle to jittery inflation risk management. It's a volatile world, and any Fed misstep might push inflation back up quicker than expected. So what does all this mean for you, the individual at home, the professional behind the desk? Here's a couple of concluding takeaways. 1.4 households. Expect continued high housing costs and ongoing economic uncertainty regarding interest rates. Don't make big bets on cheap mortgages returning overnight. Inflation may cool further, but it's a drawn-out process. And whether groceries feel cheaper will likely depend on where prices fall in your local area, and it may take a while before any relief feels real. 2.4 investors and finance professionals. Brace yourselves for a bumpy economic road in the months ahead. If the Fed starts cutting rates by 25 to 50 basis points, adjust your portfolios cautiously. This wouldn't necessarily push equity markets sky high but might help reduce volatility. Keep an eye on labor and inflation data. They will directly determine Fed moves. Ultimately, Powell's strategy is data-dependent, reacting to inflation and unemployment numbers in real time. That sounds prudent but it risks leaving the economy in neutral longer than necessary. Not good for investors or households. Everyone knows slowing inflation successfully is a marathon, not a sprint. But as we know from history, indecision or poorly timed action risks pushing the economy into deeper trouble. Come on, Jerome. We're waiting for those rate cuts. But remember, a rushed decision could end up costing more down the road. All right, that's it for today's rundown. If you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Stick around for more satirical but serious takes on fiscal policy, economic management, and the never-ending Fed drama. Stay tuned, and we'll continue decoding the complex financial world so you don't have to.